You beat nicely on earnings per share. I mean, quite a, quite a beat, although some of that, as I understand it, was the Lyft investment. How much of it was Lyft? So we had a dollar forty one in EPS, which was um, very much in line with our plan, and uh, that did include thirty one cents from Lyft and PSA, as you point out. But if you strip that out, David, a dollar ten in EPS was very much in line with our expectations. It was a solid result for the quarter, and it sets us up really well for the rest of the year as we continue to expect to meet our guidance. Revenue came in just a little bit light, thirty four point nine billion as opposed to thirty five point four. How much of that is softness in the overall auto? market in the United States and China? I would say our, our revenues, again, were very much in line with our expectations. We went in um, with the normal level of Q1 seasonality. There was also downtime that was important that we took in our full-size SUV plans as we prepare for the changeover of our uh, next generation of full-size SUVs. So when you factor that in, um, and we've communicated this um, uh, to the investor community before, I would say our results were very much in line. Last November, I believe it was, you announced a fundamental restructuring with closing some plants and really adjusting your cost structure. How much of what we saw in this quarter reflects savings from that restructuring? Yeah, we're, we're on track to achieve uh, two and a quarter billion or so of savings this year, uh, growing to four and a half billion uh, next year by the end of 2020. And in this quarter, we uh, generated savings of uh, about $400 million as, we, uh, uh, as we're on track to achieve the two and a quarter this, uh, this year. You'll really see the savings ramp up in Q2, Q3, and Q4 as a result of the actions that we're taking are, um, are uh, uh, manifesting themselves towards the end of Q1. You're going to see the run rate pick up in, in the other quarters. Uh, let's talk about North America, particularly of North American sales. Uh, a lot of that is product mix. Uh, where are you in trucks and where are you in Cadillac SUVs? Sure, we're in the full um, um, launch mode from a light duty perspective for our full size trucks. And we started out with our crew cab variant and there was a very specific plan to maximize profitability. So we rolled out our uh, rich mix, highly contented and high feature uh, crew cabs. And the sales are up 20% year over year in that segment. And we've uh, grown share with our GMC Sierra uh, vehicles as well. We're up more than 4% in the high transaction price segment. So the trucks are doing well, but it's important to note it's early innings in this uh, launch. And as we roll through Q2 and the rest of the year, you're going to see the other cab variants. We're going to roll out our double cabs, our regular cabs, our diesel, and um, ultimately our heavy-duty pickups as well. So we're very bullish on our uh, truck franchise here, and uh, we're, we're set up well for, uh, for the launch cadence that we have coming up. And from a Cadillac X SUV perspective, um, our XT4 launch has gone exceptionally well. We have grown um, retail share, and it's uh, the leading uh, um, vehicle in its own segment and uh, we have a strong launch cadence in Cadillac coming up with our XT6 launch and um, ultimately our full-size SUV as we uh, as we get ready to launch that so I would say exception doing exceptionally well and um, positions well as well as we as we go into our launch cycle here. Divya, China is terribly important to General Motors at this point uh, there's some softness in the overall market I think there's some softness reflected for General Motors in this quarter how do you see the Chinese car market developing and specifically for General Motors for the rest of the year? I think you're, as you're seeing, there's been a lot of volatility. And um, uh, while we're seeing some green shoots in the overall economy, depending on which data point you look at, um, what, you, what we're yet to see is have that translate into uh, auto demand at this point. And there's talk of stimulus that I'm sure you've heard about, David, uh, as well. But there's lack of specificity at this point on what those stimulus is, what does that actually mean, and what are they going to be. So we're va watching really closely. But what we're focused on is the factors that we can control. And um, we have 20 new launches coming up uh, later this year. And these are important launches in the key uh, segments in China. So we're, we're optimistic about that. And importantly, though, this is a team that has navigated headwinds by um, uh, having an intense focus on costs. And cost uh, control is in the DNA of the Chinese team. And mm -hmm. as the market has softened, they're taking additional steps as well from a cost standpoint. And think of it as self-help measures. So um, economy, we're watching closely. There's volatility. But obviously, right. we're, we're uh, controlling the factors that we can control.